Welcome back to another episode of Flawless Plan Garage, where I have a question for you today. Are you better at starting or finishing? Because I am definitely better at starting, which is why I always have so many projects laying around not done. But today, we are going to see the completion of the Franken truck project. Also, it's kind of cold. Stay tuned. All right, so as I was getting toward the end of the truck project, it became clear to me that I just wasn't going to get it done in a reasonable period of time. And I was having some medical issues. Uh, things were just going really slow. I got it done, got it running, got it driving, used it a few times, hauled some stuff around. Worked pretty well, but had a bunch of little things uh, that weren't done on it. And so I decided to try to sell it. I put it up online, advertised it for a few weeks, but you know, the market is limited for 8.1 liter trucks. Um, they're great at what they do, but they're terrible fuel economy and just kind of an unpopular option. So I didn't get a lot of traction on it. And a couple weeks later, I happened to be hanging out at the racetrack with my Corvair buddies. And one of my old time Corvair buddies turns to me and says, hey, uh, you wouldn't happen to be, or to know of somebody who's selling an 8.1 liter truck, would you? Because I'm, I'm looking for something bigger to haul my camper with, because my Suburban with a 350 just isn't quite cutting it anymore. And I said, yes, I do know somebody. So Corey and I ended up striking a deal. And Corey, I think that you have put more work into this truck since you bought it from me than maybe I did while I owned it, because you have really gone through it and now made this thing pretty work. nice. Yeah, you did the hard work. I just did the greasy and dirty work. Yeah, well, you, you did the sanding. In your driveway. Is... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very true. The suicide driveway. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, no, it's been great. Uh, it all, it's all worked out really well, actually. The, Probably the hardest part was actually just the body work and the paint work, which the paint is all uh, Duraback bed liner. They're yeah. smooth and they're textured. It was all textured at one time, as you can see right here, but I didn't like that. So I sanded the whole truck down again, by well, the green part anyway, and did it with their smooth, mixed with black to get a darker green, because the original green that it was on here was kind of this John Deere bright green. But I think it turned out really well really have to agree and you just I don't know that I ever got any good shots of it previously but you have to understand the life this thing lived on the ranch in Texas it had dents on every single body panel and this this whole side here lower half was basically caved in yeah. the flare was missing um, there was just just a just peppered with dents kind of everywhere so you did a lot of yeah I did a lot of body, body work. work all metal work too there's actually we didn't cut anything out and there's very very little skim filler right wow. here. this is just all beat out with a, with a hammer and dolly and then we took out the big dents but there's still some character marks yeah you know, and you don't want a truck to be too nice yeah. you know bought the flare off a, it's a factory gm flare bought it off craigslist <laughs> guy delivered it to me believe it or not nice put that on there and uh and i had put two new tires on it mm -hmm. but i still had two old bfgs on it yep. and they were getting probably pretty dried out too yeah so i just matched them found those on amazon matched them and it rides great, drives great, you know, straight down the road, because you must have had alignment done on it. Yes, yeah, yes, I did. Yeah, it drives straight, solid. I can't ask for much more. I really Probably. like I really like the little badges and graphics you did on here, too. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of that way with my cars. I like to personalize them a little bit, let everybody know that, hey, it is a big block. It's not the <laughs> diesel that everybody thinks it might be. <laughs> Put a light bar on the front. Uh, change the Chevy emblem. That's a billet. Oh, black yeah. One. Yeah, so I was that, just gonna paint the that, red one, but broke it, taking it off. That Chevy, the the Chevy emblem, I on my when I when I still had it on my extended cab truck, I was power washing it to get some bugs off, and it just literally fell off. <laughs> and so while it had fallen off, I decided to just grab random spray paint I had laying around, which was red. Ah. So I had spray painted it red, and then like glued it back on. Oh, that's why it was so hard to get off. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, my daughter's named it Rudolph after that. Ah, well, I see that. <laughs> so, so that looks really good. Yeah. Um, Obviously, I put all the little shackles yeah, on the there. Shackles on there. Yep. And, uh, it tows like a monster. I mean, it just. Yes. I tow my camper, which weighs like 6,500 pounds at 80, 85 miles an hour without even kicking down. Yeah, I could believe that easily. I I only had my uh, like low cost on my aluminum trailer behind it, which was yeah. hilarious. Yeah, like it was, you know. It. What are you doing? Maybe <laughs> maybe 2,500 pounds total, and it was like nothing. Right. So yeah, this is your this is the camper that you pull with it, I assume. Right, and it's not a big one, but you know, it worked my suburban. Yeah. 
But no, she's a good truck. All the windows work now. Because when I got it from you, it had little things. You know, windows didn't work. Yeah. Um, Four-wheel drive was messed up, but we fixed all that. Everything's all good. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, she just cut a can and cold air intake on it. Um, I put new plug wires on it. Oh, yeah. And some other, you know, the, I don't know. Yeah, the little the boots. asbestos boots. Yep. <laughs> and, well, and a race fast throttle spacer. Ooh. <laughs> just because it came with the cold air intake. So I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll give it a shot. I don't see any difference. So the other thing that you struggled with with the tune, it was doing this weird yeah. little surge every once in a while when you would accelerate mm -hmm. and let off the throttle, it was almost as if you had punched it yep. right after you let off. It was the weirdest thing. Mm -hmm. And I I could not figure out what was going on with that, um, but you did. So what, what ended up being the fix for that? It was software. Whoever programmed the other D, the other uh, ECU, just, uh, it was really messed up. According to the guy that fixed it, uh, he just flashed it with factory software. He said when he went into it, it the truck thought it was a Duramax, eight one but two wheel drive it was just all screwed up it didn't even know it was four wheel drive yeah it was all messed up so basically it basically the throttle position sensor wasn't communicating with the the transmission yeah is what he was basically telling me so flashed it back to factory and she's been perfect nice the only thing that wouldn't be factory then is that uh the security the vats would have to still be removed otherwise it wouldn't start because that was the thing i was fighting initially was the the vat system the anti-theft when the VIN of the uh, engine computer doesn't match the VIN of the body computer, it won't start. See, I don't know. So the first guy had removed that, is oh. what he said. But then he also did the custom tune, and the custom tune may have been the problem. Yeah, but I know that the ECU now has a VIN number that isn't even your old, either one of your old trucks. Really? Yeah, he told me just go on Google, find pick a, a truck that's the same, find a VIN number that has the same options. That's what we did. So it's got some wow. random VIN number in it. And it's you haven't had any, so like starts just fine. Yeah. No. Huh. Well, it's not a passkey vehicle. Right. But it still obviously makes the connection in the steering or in the lock cylinder. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, old school. But no, I haven't had any issues at all. I mean, it's been it's been great ever, especially since I got the tune fixed. Yeah. It doesn't have quite the power that it did before, but... I'm gonna put a tune back in it. I'm also gonna update the uh, transmission cooler. I'm gonna put a big one in it because yeah, I do pull it. Yeah, it's got the, it. it's it's got got the small factory. One. Yep. But yeah, I mean, I can't be happier with it. Very nice. Let's get a look at the interior here. Got the good old COVID masks. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and I have that stuff handy. But other than that, um, I replaced that switch right there, I got the mirrors working again. I actually ended up putting a new window switch in at first because I thought maybe that was the window problem. So it's got a new one of those in it. But, but other than that, I haven't done anything in here. Very nice. And this... Um, I cleaned some of the Texas dirt, I guess, out of the, out of the vents. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I had actually taken all of the plastic off. All of this plastic, the top, the face, the knee pads, the glove box all of that came from like the grab handle the whole thing oh all that came from my two-wheel drive truck because it was much nicer than the texas stuff although the, the there was probably still texas, texas dirt oh, all a lot over of the place. dirt in there <laughs> and i had peeled up um i didn't get video of any of this but i took all the seats out peeled the carpet up and power washed the carpet and put all that stuff back together because that was nasty and then of course uh, you guys will have seen the headliner project um, I don't know if I got a shot of it before, actually, back in the truck. Did you? Yeah, you can kind of see here my amateur headliner work there. It's uh, yeah. not fantastic, but it's not dropping down on your yeah, head. Exactly. <laughs> so it's got that going for it. Exactly. And this back seat was actually uh, from a local auto recycler as well. So happened to find one that matched the color and same cloth pattern and everything. Did and it have tan interior in it to begin with? Yes, but when it came to me, it had black Chevy Avalanche seats, front and rear, which did not fit, were torn up, and uh, weren't, it wouldn't move. So, so these are out of your other truck? Yeah, the fronts are out of my other truck, and then the back was from a junkyard. Um, the fronts, because they didn't move, I had to drive on a pillow so I could reach the pedals all the way home from oh Texas. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, I haven't decided what I'm going to do here. Obviously, I brought this in for the rocker. Yep. I stopped here, and obviously, here's the pewter color of the truck. Oh, yeah. I haven't decided what I'm going to do. I think I might actually, um, maybe next spring when the weather warms up, pull all the weather strip and everything and actually just probably rattle can it. Yep. You know, the closest green I can find it <laughs> yep. at Menards. I'm glad that it's working out and glad that uh, it went to somebody who could fix all my... Uh, mechanical ineptitude and things that I missed. Oh, you mean like the nut? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So that I, was a that was a little scary. <laughs> I I'm yeah. So I, another thing I didn't get on video is I put all new brakes and rotors all the way around one day in the pouring rain in my driveway, and um, that I thought had gone just fine, and I did my usual thing, which I just used my impact to just zap on the hub nuts and just laid on it for a second, and then didn't bother trying to torque it but I must not have zapped it hard enough or something. And you had that nut come almost completely off. Yeah, luckily I had to do an axle sealer. I would have never found it. Yeah. You know, because it's got the, the hubcap hub covering cap it. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know. But yeah, I sent you a picture of it. You have to post that in the video. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it was scary. I was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> yeah, overall, I thought this was a really easy swap. I didn't have to, like everything bolted right in. I didn't cut a single wire uh, for the swap or have to splice anything. It sounds like there were a couple things that I missed there mainly by using this fuse box somehow missed some power wires going back into the truck um, that no, were important so but yeah there's supposed to be it's one of these fuses this fuse i believe it is, is actually the one that's supposed to run the four-wheel drive and it's there's nothing on the back side of it okay because i don't think that or maybe it's this one it's one of these two but so we actually just there's a post right here running off this fuse yes and we just posted it right there i mean it's under you can't see it but it's under there yep everything came back alive Nice. Until the transfer case decided to... Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But she's all good. She's got a bulletproof transfer case in it now. Well, that's it for a cold and blustery Nebraska day. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. it probably for the Franken Truck Project. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me for the ride. We'll see you next time.